Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain gasoline direct injection or GDI fuel system. So I'm gonna explain all the components in this system, the differences between GDI and MPI, and I will remove the intake manifold as well to show you the fuel rate injectors and diagnostic for all those components. When there is MPI fuel injection system on the car, we only have low pressure fuel pump inside the fuel tank. And then right after that fuel will be delivered to the fuel rail and injectors will inject the fuel right at intake port inside the intake manifold which is right behind the intake valve fuel pressure on MPI system is normally around 3.5 bar and we use low pressure injectors as you see here but when we are talking about the gasoline direct injection we still have the low pressure fuel pump inside the fuel tank but at the same time we have high pressure fuel pump here as well which is driven by the camshaft and this high pressure pump is going to increase the fuel pressure up to 150 bar at maximum load and high pressure fuel from here will be provided to the fuel rail and then we have high pressure injectors that inject the fuel right into the combustion chamber inside the cylinder so as you see the difference between these two injectors this is the low pressure injector and this one is the high pressure injector for GDI system so the main components on GDI system is low pressure fuel pump inside the fuel tank high pressure pump right here and fuel rail and high pressure injectors on the cylinder head that's on this engine they are located under the intake manifold so I will remove the intake manifold to show you guys those injectors as well but if we take a look at the high pressure fuel pump on the engine we have a couple of connections this one is the intake line which is coming from the low pressure fuel pump so the pressure over here is slightly higher than the MPI as I said earlier on MPI we have normally 3.5 bar fuel pressure here it's gonna go up to 4.5 bar and this is the outlet from here to the fuel rail as you see this one goes all the way down to the fuel rail this high pressure pump is driven by the camshaft it means on the camshaft we have another extra cam to drive the high pressure pump so it means whenever the engine runs camshaft is rotating and uh, the pump and this pump is operating as well so because pump is operating it's creating the fuel pressure for us but engine doesn't need that high pressure all the times because when engine is idling or when you are driving at very low speed the pressure that this pump provides to the injectors or to the fuel rail is going to be something around 40 bar but when you are driving at maximum load the pressure is going to go up to 150 bar so ECM should be able to control the output pressure from the high pressure pump to the fuel rails. So that's why we have the fuel pressure regulator. So this valve is gonna control the output pressure of the high pressure pump, which is controlled by the ECM as well. But how can ECM knows about the pressure? How can ECM read the pressure to send a signal to uh, this valve to control the pressure? For reading the pressure of the fuel system, there is fuel rail pressure sensor on the fuel rail I'm gonna show you that one on the fuel rail as well so this is the rail pressure sensor so when engine is running this sensor will read the fuel rail pressure and it's gonna send a signal to engine control module and ECM by reading the pressure from here is gonna control this valve to regulate the output pressure of the high pressure pump okay let's remove the intake manifold uh, have a look at the fuel rate and the injectors and then I'm gonna get back to all these components to explain how to perform the diagnostics for those ones we have already removed the intake manifold so you can see the fuel rail down here so if I remove this protection so you see the fuel rail and injectors right now so this is the fuel rail so as I said earlier when engine is running high pressure pump will deliver the fuel from here all the way to the fuel rail and all injectors are connected down there and on the fuel rail we have 
fuel rail pressure sensor as well. So basically, when engine is running, fuel is provided to the fuel rail, fuel rail pressure sensor uh, will send a signal to ECM regarding the pressure inside the fuel rail. So if the pressure is more than what ECM is expecting, it's going to control the fuel pressure by controlling the fuel pressure regulating valve. Some points regarding the high pressure pump which are really, really important. First of all, on the high pressure line, if you try to disconnect the high pressure line, if you try to remove the injectors or fuel rail, you shouldn't do it when engine is running and you shouldn't do it when engine is just turned off because you still have the high pressure inside the fuel lines which is extremely dangerous. In case that you remove the high pressure pump to replace it, you gotta be remember that under the a high pressure pump as you see here there is a roller tappet basically we have the roller tappet seated on the cam on the camshaft and when engine is running that roller tappet is gonna go up and down up and down and uh, that's how your high pressure pump is creating the pressure but in case that you are replacing the high pressure pump you need to remember if crankshaft is set at TDC mark that cam for the high pressure pump most likely is located like this which is going to make it really really difficult for you to install the high pressure pump so basically you need to keep rotating the crankshaft until the flat side of the cam is pointed upward so then you can install the high pressure pump and the fuel pressure control valve we have two wires so each one of these two wires is connected to uh, engine control module and engine can control the valve by controlling actually those two wires you can disconnect the connector as well and check the internal resistance of the control valve as well on multimeter I select resistance and if I check the resistance of this valve I'm gonna get 0.8 7 0 0.8 ohms which is exactly within the range a specification is uh, something around one ohm. on the fuel rail you see the injectors at the same time you can see the wiring diagram for the injectors on the screen if i zoom it a little and if i disconnect one connector from injector as you see i have two wires blue and pink and this is exactly what wiring diagram shows us basically on the mpi injectors we have one of these two wires coming from the fuse box providing the power and the other one is a control line but on this GDI engine these two wires are connected directly to the ECM and ECM can control the GDI injectors by doing that this is actually one difference between this injector and the other MPI injectors there is no power supply coming from the fuse box it's coming directly from the uh, engine ECM but there are some important points anytime that you remove the injector or you replace the injector because this injector inject directly into the combustion chamber there should be a seal over here to prevent any sort of uh, compression leak so anytime that you replace the injector you have to replace this seal as well and some GDI engines they come with a seal protection cap as well when it's brand new the cap is over here so you need to remove the cap from brand new injectors right before installing the injector on the cylinder head. So do not remove the protection cap earlier because this, this seal may expand and it's not going to seal properly uh, after that. So fuel rail pressure sensor here as well. It comes with three wires. You see three wires over here, red, pink and brown. These are exactly what we have on the wind diagrams as you see on the screen. Uh, all these wires are connected to the ECM as well. And now let's see how we can test the rail pressure uh, with the scan tool. I have already connected my scan tool. Ignition switch is on. Scan tool is reading the car. As you see, scan tool is reading my car. Kia Rio 2012. Also, as you see, car has GDI 1.6 engine. I 
on system selection i'm gonna go for engine now let's go for data stream so on data stream i'm gonna go for these items actual engine speed filtered rail pressure rail value and fuel rail pressure sensor voltage so i'm gonna start the engine so as you see here is the engine rpm i have the rail pressure value over here rail pressure sensor voltage and this is a set point for the fuel rail pressure as you see engine is running at idle it's just trying to reach to the idle because i just started the engine the rpm is a little high engine is trying to uh keep the rail pressure set at 40 bar and as you see it's almost 40 uh, bars so when you are checking the gdi system with the scan tool uh, you're gonna need to make sure when engine is running at idle the pressure over here is 40 bar so when you see the pressure over here is not at 40 bar it's at 4.5 bar it means that uh, high pressure system is not working at all of course in case of failure if the high pressure system is not working the low pressure still is going to start the engine and you can drive the car but you shouldn't expect that much power that you were getting with the high pressure pump as you see engine rpm is dropping to normal right now but still we have 40 bar it means that ECM is receiving a signal from fuel rail pressure sensor and is actually controlling the fuel pressure regulator valve so this one is actually confirming the fuel rail pressure sensor operation and this one is confirming the fuel pressure regulator valve operation as well which should be at 40 bar and of course when you are driving at maximum load this one is going to go up to uh, 140 150 bar so for example when i'm accelerating you see the pressure is going to go high when i release the gas pedal it's going to go back to normal which is 40 bar all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please don't forget to visit the channel page for more videos like this